All righty. Okay, well, you should see our um, Central Penn College logo there, Lori. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so Central Penn College uh, mission statement says, says that Central Penn College opens opportunities to students from a variety of academic backgrounds by providing the education needed for employment and advancement in their fields. This is something we're very passionate about at the college because our students do come from different academic backgrounds and we are able to bring them in so they can get that degree or certificate that they want to, in order to either get a job or advance in their job. And the, our vision is to become a leading resource for professional education in the central Pennsylvania region and beyond. Okay, Lori, how did you hear about Central Penn originally? In the area, my whole life, so I just knew you guys were there. Okay, so something that some people might not realize in the Lancaster area is that we do have a main campus. It's outside of Harrisburg, and the college um, started as a business school downtown Harrisburg in 1881 and then as we grew we moved across the river so we have a beautiful campus in a town called Enola and we often refer to that as our Somerdale campus so if somebody were to say to you oh I thought they were in Somerdale I, I like to tell my students yes we are we're in Somerdale and also here in Lancaster on the corner of Old Philadelphia Pike and Greenfield Road okay mm -hmm. all right so Central Penn College is a little different than other schools and it makes the experience for our students that work outside the home or they're at home working and they need a, something that's flexible and maybe goes a little bit more quickly. So it is possible to earn your degree faster because we have four 11 week terms. So you go to school for 11 weeks, taking a set of classes, and then you have two weeks off to kind of regroup, and then you're back at it for 11 weeks. Okay. So if you've ever looked at a more traditional school, there might be two semesters in a summer term. We have four. So if you go part-time with three classes, you're earning 36 credits in a calendar year versus other schools part-time, you, you're not gonna get that in, in that uh, time frame. okay? So I tell my students that the associate program, if you go full time, do not stop. You can get your associates in 15 to 24 months and the bachelor's in three months. And then that's then your internship on top of that. Okay. The student faculty ratio in Somerdale is 15 to one. I tell my students that you might see that a little bit smaller in our Lancaster Center. Uh, but uh, overall, it's about 15 to 1. In Lancaster, we only have evening classes. Um, you take your classes from 5.30 in the evening till 8.30 p.m. with an online component. So that component is graded separately. It's online. It's typically an assignment that the instructor will give to you before leaving that evening, okay? But the, but the other um, part of that I want to share with you is that each class meets one time per week for 11 weeks. If you were to take a, two classes and you wanted them both in length, you'd be there two nights a week for 11 weeks. Does that make sense? So, when do you do the online work? Pardon me? in Lancaster at the building two nights a week. Correct. And did you say there's an online part to that or is that just extra that he gives you? No, there's an extra hour of online instruction. So okay. I tell my students maybe your um, marketing professor would give you a, a a case study maybe you've discussed it in class and and then you would go back and take uh do the let do that work but it's graded separately and it's separate from the regular curriculum okay okay yeah um students 
when you're in the when you're walking through that building and you're there for an evening class our students are preparing for careers or they're trying to um in, you know get a big a different job and they can't without the degree so we do practice professionalism in the on you know at the center um we do hands-on activities there's group projects and things like that okay Every student that goes to Central Penn College is required to do an internship prior to graduation. That internship can be something you, you navigate and then work through our career services department to secure, or the uh, career services department can and, um, assist you uh, if working in an internship doesn't work for your schedule, you can do capstone and that's fully online. If you've been to another school, we do transfer credit evaluations. The student provides the transcript to, to me, to our um, admin department, and then someone evaluates that and sees which credits can come towards your degree at Central Penn College. Naturally, because we take students from a variety of different academic backgrounds, we, we, we want to give them academic support. So we, we do have a learning center, we have tutoring options, we have counselors, faculty advisors, as well as student success coaches. Um, of course, we also have our center director and myself and um, other instructors that do keep office hours in Lancaster for, for questions and things. There's the building, so you pass it every day or once a week that's our that's our lancaster center um we love it we're growing it and it's uh, it's a great place to take classes we are super excited about our certificate program programs that we're launching so this entrepreneurship and small business is a pro is a certificate that we're working uh, for towards uh, the fall term of 2020. Um, we also have a phlebotomy technician and a telehealth certificate, which is non-credit. Central Penn College also offers associate degree programs in accounting, communications, com computer, in computer information systems, criminal justice, entrepreneurship and small business, marketing, paralegal, medical assisting, as well as occupational therapy and physical assistant, physical therapy assistant. The ones in orange are the ones you can take on ground. The rest have online components to them. Then your bachelor's, you know, maybe you take your associates and decide you want to go in and have a bachelor's. Some students start with the bachelor's right away. And we have those in accounting, business administration, and criminal justice at the Lancaster Center. The other ones you would have to take fully online and with the legal studies, you'd have to be up in Somerdale for some classes. This is a super fun slide and I've used this analogy a few times. We do have stackable degree programs. Um, so if, my, if a student starts with certificate program in the entrepreneurship and small business, loves it, decides that they want to go on and get their associates, those credits can be transferred into our associate's degree. And then when they realize, wow, I'd really like that bachelor's, whew, that associate's goes right into our business bachelor's degree. So uh, we call them our stackable degree programs. So again, uh, just to review the accelerated terms, we have 11 week terms and two week breaks. So certificate can be in as little as nine months, associate as in as little as 15 months, plus your internship, bachelor's three years plus internship, and the master's in a year and a half. With the associates, bachelor's and master's, I would say you'd have to have some transfer credits if you're not going to be full time to be able to hit that marker. 
And so proud of this, uh, our graduate success rate, 90.6 were employed in their chosen field or continuing their education within one year of graduation. We have amazing career services support system. Um, Mr. Hassinger is very supportive of his students and also prospective students he's helped as well. Um, lots of different resources. Uh, we have a job pursuit seminar, career expos, employer mock interviews. We've had networking sessions at the center and individualized um, meetings with students and alumni. And I'm going to hand this off to John, who is our financial aid counselor up in Somerdale. Great. Yep. Thank you, Carol. Hi, Laurie. And thanks for joining in today. Uh, and anyone else who may have logged in, thanks for being here. Uh, yeah, my name is John Steindell. I uh, have been a, a financial planning coordinator here at uh, Central Penn for over seven years now. I currently work out of our Somerdale office at Harrisburg. However, I did work along with Carol down at our Lancaster Center in the past. I have worked there. And uh, actually, my wife is from uh, Smoketown, PA, which I think is you know, less than 10 minutes from uh, the Lancaster Center. So I'm pretty familiar with things down there. Um, what I'm gonna do today is gonna be real basic, Financial Aid 101. So it's gonna be a lot of information in a, a short time. Um, some of it may not uh, apply to you at all, but I'll just touch on, you know, all the areas that we have listed here in the slides. Um, the main things I'd want you to remember is we have, uh, I have seven colleagues. There are eight of us here in our financial aid uh, team. Uh, we're available to help you at any time. When you're looking at uh, starting out classes during your entire college career and even afterwards, we have a lot of folks uh, who are available to help you with questions or um, at, at any point. So please keep that in mind. And also one other thing I want you to, to, to know is there are a lot of different options for covering school costs. Some people might think it's only the financial aid that the government offers, but there's a lot more than that. So we're gonna to try to run through that uh, just real quickly today. I'll stick around later for any questions uh, as well. And like I said, I'm always available uh, by phone, email, or text at any time. So if we can go to the first slide here, uh, the next slide. And this is just kind of follow up on uh, what Carol had talked about. Um, this is a government Department of Education slide that just highlights the importance of education and how beneficial it is. It's not only about the money. Obviously, we wanna help you find a career that you enjoy and you can thrive in and be satisfied with, but um, there is a significant value to an education. It's an investment that, that's gonna bear a lot of fruit. It's different than many other things that we spend money on, like a new car. They say it starts to lose value the minute you pull it out of the, you know, the dealership lot. Not so with education, as you can see this chart shows. The more education you have, the more uh, earning power you have throughout your life. So next slide is really just an overview of what we're going to touch on here today briefly. These are the different types of financial aid. Um, there are some things that are called gift aid or free money, and that's what we want to make sure we help you get every penny of that that you qualify for. That would be grants and scholarships. Um, there are also student loans the federal government offers to help with costs and numerous other sources that we'll touch on briefly here today. So next up would be grants. Um, there are uh, uh, two different sources of grants through the government. There, the federal government offers two different types, but also the state of Pennsylvania offers grants as well. And again, this is uh, free money to those who qualify. Um, there's a, the primary grant is the federal Pell Grant. Uh, it can be up to over 6,300 per year. Um, the way they calculate it, now we here at Central Penn don't calculate your eligibility. We'll help you with the process, but the federal government does that. They base it off of, for this current financial aid year, off of your 2018 income. Um, so they'll ask for your tax information from that year if you filed taxes, and your household size, the number of folks in your household. Um, so that's how they determine your eligibility for the Pell Grant. There's another one, it's called the SEOG Grant. Uh, there's a lot of acronyms in financial aid. <laughs> we'll be glad to help you if you have questions about them, but the SEOG grant is more of a kind of a first come first serve. So it's important to get the application in, uh, which is the FAFSA, which I'll talk more about in just a minute. 
um, as soon as you can each year. Um, if you haven't done the current FAFSA, we'll be glad to help you with it. Next year's FAFSA is actually uh, open in a little over a month at the beginning of October. So we can help you get that done as soon as you can as well. And as I mentioned, the Pennsylvania, uh, the state of Pennsylvania offers a grant through FIA. Um, you need to do your application, the FAFSA, by May 1st each year to be considered. And there's a couple other things. You have to be a Pennsylvania resident and maintain um, your grades, your academic progress. But those are three different grants that you could potentially qualify for uh, to help with your school costs. Again, that's the free money for those who are eligible. Up next, uh, just touching on student loans, um, the grants uh, don't cover all the costs by themselves. So a lot of students take advantage of the federal student loans. Um, as far as loans go, they are very good. There's a lot of great benefits that you don't get with other kinds of loans. Um, first of all, some of the loans are called subsidized. Um, now that's not for everyone, but based on your uh, financial need, which um, is determined by your FAFSA application, those who qualify for subsidized loans, the government actually will pay the interest for you while you're in school, um, during the six months after you finish school, and um, at other times, uh, if you get what's called a deferment, there would not even be any interest for you on that portion of your, your student loans. Um, there are also unsubsidized loans. The uh, interest is not paid, but uh, with, the, with the government loans, you do not have to make any payments at all while you're in school. Plus, they give you six months after you're done with school, they call it a grace period, to get you know, a job and get settled in before you would need to start making any payments um, at all. So you, you can make payments if you want, but you are not required to while you're in school. Um, you can see the uh, eligibility there. They, uh, it's between 9,500 and 12,500 per year. So a lot of funding available. Um, they do not check your credit. This, this is not based on your credit. Um, it's just uh, anyone can qualify, except in a couple circumstances, but usually most everyone qualifies for the federal student loans just by doing the FAFSA. Um, there are, as I mentioned, some really good benefits. There are different repayment options. Once you start repayment that you can do, some are based on your income. Um, if you'd ever find yourself in a difficult situation, being unemployed or uh, just need uh, you know, some time off from the, the student loan payments, there are many options available. They call them deferment and, and forbearance. Um, there are also parent loans, federal parent plus loans, they call them, for dependent students, and that's for students who are under age 24 or who are not married or uh, don't have any dependents. Um, they're typically considered dependent and their parents could be eligible uh, potentially to take out a parent loan to help. So next up is, as I mentioned, the application, which is called the FAFSA. Um, it stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So one thing to be make sure you're aware of, it is free to do the FAFSA and there's no, uh, no obligation to anything at all. So what we can do here for you in our financial aid department is let you know ahead of time um, exactly what you qualify for to help you make your decision with no obligation or cost to you. Uh, the uh, website is fafsa.gov, pretty simple. Make sure you get the government site, so it's a .gov website. Um, it's the application both for the grants, the uh, federal Pell Grant, and it's also the first step for the Pennsylvania uh, aid, the Pennsylvania grant through FIA, um, and it's the first step for the federal student loans. Now doing the FAFSA does not obligate you to take out loans. There would be another step if you would decide you'd wanna do that. Um, so I wanna make that clear. You're not signing up for student loans by doing the FAFSA, but um, it is the application for financial aid. Uh, there's our school code. When you do the FAFSA, you can look us up by name, on a list of schools, or it's easier just to put in our school code there and it will pull our school right up. Once you do the FAFSA, once you finish it and submit it, um, and as I mentioned, we're here to help with that uh, if you have any questions or need assistance, but once you submit it, we get the results here within usually just a couple days and we can follow up and help you if there's anything else that's needed. It's a really pretty quick process to let you know what you qualify for. Um, as I mentioned, there's another step that you would need to do to use the student loans. That's those couple documents there online, a promissory note and an entrance counseling. Uh, again, we'll help you with that uh, any way we can.
All right, so some other sources next up is scholarships. Um, besides those sources which the government offers, there are other organizations that can give you help with school costs. Uh, scholarships are also free money, almost always free money. So um, we, I would wanna let you know, Central Penn offers numerous scholarships for you. Um, we have scholarships available to students who have uh, uh, graduated from Hack or Thaddeus Stevens. If you transfer in credits, you could get a scholarship. Uh, there are a couple that just require a couple uh, short essay to, to apply for. Um, so we'll be glad to help you look into those and uh, see if you uh, uh, qualify for any. We'd love to, to, uh, to help with that process. Also, for our active students, if you enroll here and once you're in school here, uh, our Central Penn Foundation offers numerous scholarships uh, through your entire time here at Central Penn. So you could potentially get scholarships uh, all along the way while you're a student here at Central Penn College. I've listed a couple other websites here. There are other places you can look for scholarships. Uh, the U.S. Department of Labor has a, a helpful site. Uh, Fast Web is another one. They're not affiliated with us, but it's a, a safe site to do a search for scholarships. Um, Probably the best place though to look for extra money in scholarships would be through any organizations or clubs that you're part of, whether that be something like a Rotary or Elks or, or a church or religious, religious organization may often uh, give help for school. So definitely be worth checking with them to see if they do that. Um, up next, another source that's becoming more popular these days is for employers to help with school costs for their employees. It's an investment they make to help their employees uh, in their career. And so um, uh, if you're not sure if, if that would be offered, you can check with your supervisor or human resources department. Um, every employer is different, uh, so you'd have to check with them. Main thing I'd wanna let you know is we do offer a, an, uh, a deferred payment option for anything that your employer might pay you. Uh, typically, if a student wants to make a cash payment, we would require at least a part of the partial payment up front, but from an employer, we can allow you to defer that payment actually until after the term ends, so you don't have to pay anything out of pocket up front. Uh, to get, get you more details about that if you'd like, uh, if you have questions. Um, we also partner with over 300 local and some regional businesses and organizations, um, and we have a scholarship and award uh, if you work for one of those community partners, we call them, Again, be glad to get you more details and let you, uh, you can see the list on our website of those local businesses and organizations. Also, just touch real briefly on military benefits uh, for any of our, if we have uh, any veterans or service members or guard members uh, who've joined in, thanks for your service. Um, you uh, often qualify for um, different military benefits. We wanna help you get what you've earned as part of your service to our country. There's a GI Bill, uh, there's benefits for active duty um, and guard members, and we also offer an, a military appreciation board uh, to you as well, scholarship. Um, next slide up is some other funding sources. There are numerous other ones that, that we can help you look into. The state of Pennsylvania has vocational rehabilitation benefits. Um, there's a federal work study program that uh, we have some jobs on campus you could potentially work at. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania through FIA has some other programs, different scholarships as well that you could look at. Um, and also there's a couple other things there listed, including obviously we would accept cash payments if you wanted to contribute anything out of pocket. We do have a, a monthly payment plan of three monthly payments that, that we could let you know more about as well. So that's a real quick overview of different sources of funding that you could look at for school we also want to help you though, you could, uh, another way of helping with costs is to reduce them up front. And so as Carol mentioned, we can help uh, you see if you could transfer any credits if you have uh, been to previous schools, uh, lifelong learning credits, there's options like even in buying books to get used copies or rental or digital um, and uh, different ways that you could potentially reduce your costs that could also help you during your uh, college career, we'll be glad to discuss those options with you also. Lastly, um, just as a reminder, everybody's situation is unique and that's why we're here. We have uh, uh, folks here, including myself, who will be glad to uh, discuss all these different options and help with any questions you have 
We want to guide you through this process and make sure you uh, are able to get whatever financial aid or benefits that you qualify for, all at no obligation to you. Uh, I think that's it. Here's the last slide. It has my information on there. I'd be glad to help you however I can. Feel free to reach out. Uh, I put my coworker, my colleague Krista, on there as well. She often works with our Lancaster students and she does the same thing as I do. She'll be glad to help you as well. I think that's it. Hi, Lori. My name is Benjamin Lipschutz. I'm the interim dean of business professional studies. And uh, I believe I'll go over the next couple slides for you here. So as the interim dean of business professional studies, I oversee our accounting, our business, our graduate degree programs, as well as our criminal justice, legal studies, IT, and homeland security programs. One of the things I really strive to work towards here at Central Bend College is the education and the experience you get in the classroom. That starts with your faculty. The faculty at the college, both full-time and our part-time faculty, have practical experience and they're bringing that practical knowledge into the classroom. And so really this is a three-sided approach where our faculty are currently working in the field or they have that real-world experience and they're staying current, up to date, in terms of being a practitioner, whether it's in the field of criminal justice, in the field of accounting, in the fields of organization, organizational leadership management, and IT. And they're bringing that practical experience into the classroom by allowing you to um, incorporate coursework, which really applies to real world situations, whether it is up to date case studies, um, whether it's projects in which right now we have an IT class, which is currently designing applications for a business. And we're allowing these things to allow adult students to raise real world questions from their own experiences and their own job sites. And all these go to create an enhanced learning option and outcome for our students, really providing the best experience for you in order for the college to achieve the mission of creating an experience that allows you to become employable and advanced in your career fields. So one of the things that John mentioned previously was the, uh, this option for lifelong learning credits. So lifelong learning credits is something we offer students to give them credit for their work experience or their prior work experience. To uh, um, qualify for these credits, students have to have five or more years of real world or relevant work experience. And then upon meeting with myself and or the chair of the program, we'll work to um, understand what your experience equates to in terms of our college courses. And then we'll work with you to create a portfolio submitted to the school to apply for those credits. At the associate level, you're allowed to apply for up to nine credit hours of lifelong learning credit. So that's equivalent to three classes within the major. And at the bachelor's level, that actually increases to 18 credits or six classes, which you can apply towards your major. Um, and so really what it comes down to is that you're showing improving competency and that you met, already met the learning objectives of those courses through prior work. Um, from IT professionals, they've submitted uh, projects they've worked on, um, code they've written uh, for accounting professionals, they submitted um, either a proof of their job and job description, which they're working in, working in ledgers or bookkeeping or database management. And for criminal justice, it's uh, for students that are actually working in the field, taking their job descriptions, letters from their superiors saying what they've done. And we create a portfolio which is submitted, which you would then petition to get those credits. We also accept several transfer credits from colleges. Currently, we ask that a student complete 50% of their degree credits at the college. And so that's 50% for the associates and 50% uh, for the bachelors. The bachelors are slightly different in which we can actually allow up to 75 credits, um, but we're transferring classes that generally have a C or higher. Um, and then when you do do the transfer evaluation, you'll submit all your, uh, your official transcripts from your previous education institutions to our registrar's office. They will evaluate the transcript and then they'll provide you with what we call a transfer evaluation, which lists out all the courses that you'll be taking and would need to take to complete your degree. And then we can always go back and reevaluate that and adjust that as necessary on a one-on-one -on -one unique basis. 
So one of the new certificates that we're actually offering here at the Lancaster Center, Lancaster Center starting in the fall is our entrepreneurship certificate. So it's a certificate in entrepreneurship and small business. And it ties very really closely to our associate's degree program and then as well as into our bachelor's degree program. It's giving you those essential business skills to get into the field as quickly as possible. It's meant to be 18 credit hours or six classes completed over nine months that can be completed in the evenings at Lancaster two nights a week. And it's giving you the basis of the knowledge to include management skills, marketing skills, basis of accounting for a business. And then um, you can have an option. So one of the courses coming up is entrepreneurship in the context of crisis. And then that all culminates with a entrepreneurship course in which you're creating your business plan and you're doing a visual business model and then you're actually selling that or pitching that model throughout the course, learning how to present, present yourself and present your business idea. One of the other courses we offer, or programs we offer, is criminal justice. And so in criminal justice, you're learning how to conduct investigations, uh, follow a chain of evidence, uh, conduct interviews of witnesses and suspects, and just gaining a very in-depth knowledge of the ethical laws, due process, and crime prevention. Some of the classes which are incorporated that you see in this program are juvenile justice, understanding uh, why individuals commit crime. Um, and so changes in societal changes of victimology. Then you also get into like essential criminal justice research, as well as some additional courses, um, which are more current and relevant, such as cybersecurity and uh, some other classes, such as investigative report writing and criminal law, police operations, uh, in criminal investigations. It also incorporates some components of business because you're learning understanding organizational behavior and principles of management as it's expecting you to go into management eventually within the criminal justice field. I'm going to let uh, Susan Snyder, one of our professors for the uh, accounting and business department, uh, go over the next couple slides then. Hi there, I'm glad you could join us today. So um, whether you decide you're gonna uh, own your own business or you're gonna you know, join a larger company, um, our business administration degree provides you with a lot of um, skills that gives you, you know, some, some information in the accounting, the marketing um, areas, as well as you can do concentrations in banking and finance, healthcare, HR, management, marketing. Um, so you'll learn in the business administration major how to um, interpret data, how to analyze data, use uh, latest business technologies and software uh, to become more efficient within your organization. Uh, business communications is very important today. So learning how to effectively uh, write an email, write a memo, uh, report, and communicate in person. We, we spend a lot of time on that. And then um, finally creating a successful business plan is kind of the culminating project there, something that you can, you know, actually use as, as you, uh, you know, decide whether you want to venture out on your own um, or, or join a company with your degree. Some of the courses that you'll take in the business program are um, accounting one and two, Intro to Business, Finance, Microeconomics, and of course, Principles of Management, Principles of Marketing, HR, International Business, Electronic Business, Org Behavior. Uh, there's a business seminar course, which kind of brings together a lot of the concepts you've learned in the earlier classes into one class. Uh, business Law, important class for sure. And um, your, your internship or capstone, uh, whichever you decide to do. Um, if you decide to do the internship, which will give you hands-on, you know, real-world experience, um, there is a, a job pursuit seminar that will help you in searching out that internship, putting together your resume, cover letters, and, and so forth. Um, to interview questions, you know, practice for interview questions, um, and all that good stuff to kind of get you into an internship. But you can also use those skills later um, outside of internship when you're interviewing for a new position, either right out of college or, or later on down the road. 
And then the accounting program, um, which is my passion, of course, being the uh, faculty member for accounting. Um, you know, accounting is a growing profession. Uh, the, the government predicts a 10% growth in accounting in careers through 2026. And I'm constantly on the lookout for my students for, you know, positions, open positions and so forth. And right now there's just a ton of them. Um, just, you know, bookkeeper positions galore. Um, I think, you know, what's going on today in the world and so forth has really kind of highlighted the need to have good financial information, especially when you're looking at times where, um, you know, every penny counts in your business. So there's a lot of positions that are open today and, and the growth is there for the future as well. There's a high demand. Um, depending upon your level of experience, depending upon your degree level, um, accountants can make you know, anywhere from around 44, 45,000 a year um, all the way up to 114,000 a year. And the median salary comes in around 66, 67,000. So there's a lot of earning potential there in the accounting profession as well. Um, as the, a major in the associate degree program, um, you will absolutely be working with, with data and numbers and so forth. You'll learn how to interpret, analyze financial data. Uh, we use uh, accounting and software packages. For instance, um, QuickBooks is a program that is, is taught in one of our courses and uh, Tax Act is, is taught in our income tax class. Um, of course, Excel is an important um, software package that accountants and business um, individuals use every day in the office. We're gonna learn how to perform cost and revenue projections as part of your accounting experience at Central Penn. And you're gonna get really excellent experience on your internship um, if you choose to do that rather than the capstone with local companies. Many of our interns have gone on to work permanently for those local companies and have found that the, the experience they got on the job through internship was really you know, invaluable in getting them that first step in the door and, and the opportunity for advancement later on. So here are the, some of the courses that you'll take um, in the accounting program. Of course, accounting one and two, which is uh, the same that you took in the business program if you, if you decided to go that route, um, those courses are, you know, building the foundation, um, the, the building blocks of, of accounting that you're going to build on later on throughout the remaining courses. Um, and then your higher level accounting courses will be your intermediate accounting one, two, and three. Managerial accounting, which focuses more on internal reporting in the business and the needs of your internal users. Um, what can you provide your internal users from an accounting perspective? Our income tax class is predominantly individual income tax. So we're gonna focus a lot on, you know, how to do 1040, um, how to determine, you know, itemized deductions that you have and get the most um, deductions so that your taxable income is, is minimized. We have an, an auditing course and uh, that can help individuals determine whether they wanna kind of go that route in with their accounting degree. Cost accounting is, is another kind of specialty area so we have a course in that. And then of course we have finance, microeconomics, principles of management, principles of marketing, international business, org behavior, um, and your internship business law job pursuit seminar. So you can see that some of the courses, you know, are in line with the business degree. Uh, we, you know, obviously if you're taking the accounting uh, route, there are some, you know, quite a few more accounting courses there to make sure that you're um, really well prepared when you get out into the workplace. At this point, we're going to do a question and answer period with alumni testimonial with Adam Schwartz. So hi, Adam, thank you for coming today. Hi, thanks for having me. I always, always uh, get energized when I get to see and meet students that have graduated from Central Penn College. And I love to hear their story and um, it makes me very proud. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then I think we have questions for you. Okay, 
Yeah, well, um, I was, you know, born and raised in the Lancaster County area. Um, you know, have uh, four siblings. My whole family's from this area. So, uh, you know, that's kind of why I decided to go to school in this area. Um, and now I'm a licensed CPA and uh, kind of settle on down here. Had you gone to any other school prior to Central Penn College? I did, yeah. So I had gone to Thaddeus Stevens College. Um, I did their carpentry program there, and then I also did an electrical program. Oh, okay, great. But then you wanted the accounting, like the business. You had a uh, hankering for some business. <laughs> Correct, yeah, yeah. So I had actually, I'd gone out in the field um, in carpentry, worked with like uh, cabinets and countertops, um, kind of sort of hit my peak there in that field and just remembered that when I was at uh, Thaddeus Stevens, I'd taken a business course there and we had studied accounting. And so that's kind of what sparked my interest in, in returning to college and checking out Central Penn's accounting program. That's, that's awesome. Very exciting. I think we do have some questions prepared, right, Susan? Yeah. Mike, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, you had mentioned that when you were out in the, in the field or, and when you took some classes at Thaddeus Stevens that um, you, know, you took an accounting course and that kind of sparked your interest um, in accounting, which I think resonates with a lot of folks that end up in our accounting program. Um, you know, they, they took a course or they were exposed to accounting in some, some manner and it kind of sparked an interest um, with them. But what specifically drew you to, to Central Penn? I know you, you said you were um, from the area, but was there anything other than location that, that maybe kind of interested you when you went to look at Central Penn initially? Yeah, absolutely. So um, for me, I knew I wanted to take uh, some in-person classes if possible. Um, and, you know, being from Lancaster area, that was that was kind of the area I was looking for. And so with your Lancaster campus there, um, that was, you know, that was definitely something that appealed to me. But it was really also, too, that the term schedule, having the four terms in a year as someone who had a full time job that enabled me to be able to take a reasonable amount of courses in a year's time, but still not like overload myself uh, with credits. So um, yeah, it really just allowed me to not take like 10 years to get my bachelor's degree. So that was, uh, that was big. Yeah, I, we, and we have a lot of students, you know, that, that do still continue to work full time or, or part time and have families and commitments outside of school. So um, I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, being able to take your classes in the evenings, a couple nights a week, um, and then doing some online work, I think really helps with that work-life balance, um, for sure. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, I don't recall, Adam, did you transfer any credits in when you came to Central Penn? I did, yeah. So I was, uh, I was actually able to transfer most of my general education credits from Thaddeus Stevens. I believe that came out to be about 24 credits. Um, so I was really excited about that uh, when I transferred in. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, I, I thought maybe you did, but I wasn't sure um, uh, what you were able to transfer in. But yeah, the general ed classes would definitely transfer in. What do you, um, what do you, your time at Central Penn, if you think back, which wasn't that long ago, um, what did you like most about um, Central Penn and being a student at Central Penn? Yeah, so I think uh, just like all my professors who are really good, uh, very approachable, always willing to help and answer questions. Um, and one of the things that I liked about being at the, the Lancaster campus in particular is that like most of the students that I was going to school with, um, you know, were kind of similar to me. They had jobs um, and, you know, were looking to advance in their careers and, and uh, I, I think there's just a lot of value in that and being able to connect with, you know, with, with students like that. Excellent. And um, just my final question here is, you know, for a prospective student or somebody that is, you know, thinking about um, attending Central Penn College, what is something that you think every prospective student, you know, should know coming in? Um, 
I think, uh, I mean, it's probably true of like of any school, but I think your education is really, uh, it's, you know, it's what you make it. And uh, as long as you work hard and, you know, are disciplined, I think you'll, you'll succeed at what you're looking to do. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks for your yep. time today, Adam. I yes, appreciate thank being you, Adam. Here. We, we, we do, really we absolutely do love having our students come yes. back and, <laughs> and talk, you know, and, and visit and stuff and tell us what they're up to. So it's, it's really great to, Great to see you and great to have you here today. Yeah.